You're listening to the Jam Pro Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is producer director Lori Miller, and we're going to be talking the brand about her brand new documentary called Living Wine. Welcome to the show, Lori. Nice to have you here. Hi. Thanks for having me. Really excited to talk about the film with you. Well, I'm excited about talking about this film also. As soon as I saw it, I went, "Oh, this is something I really want to talk about because it's it's." You're right. I mean, there's so many things in this, but um, as I was watching it yesterday, <laughs> drinking my wine that I is mass produced, and I was thinking, oh no, I shouldn't be drinking this. <laughs> I should be looking for the more natural wine because I try to do everything organic. And, you know, I have through most of my adult life and, you know, try to eat well and follow all the great things that we're supposed to do, except for drinking wine. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm exactly like you. I mean, this is what exactly inspired me to make the film. Um, I've spent decades just being so careful about my diet and, and trying to support local farmers. And, you know, I have a kid and making sure she ate well and wasn't, you know, trying to minimize all the hormones and the antibiotics in the food. And I love wine. Um, you know, I have to admit, it's like Me too. <laughs> wine and coffee are kind of my vices. And Me too. <laughs> it's always sort of fun to get together with friends after a long week and, you know, open up the bottle. And I just was really, really surprised when I found out that there's this whole demographic of people, maybe not the younger generation, they probably are already on the natural wine train, like Gen Z and even millennials. Um, but I, I think within that group too, there's still many people that, you know, would love to know about this, but right. just like you're saying, um, I thought that the wine I was just buying at wherever Whole Foods or, you know, in LA, we have Ralph's is our, uh, big corporate grocery store. I just thought it was a natural beverage and I was surprised to find that it isn't. And of course there are many gradations from the pure natural wine, which is sort of featured in our film to the like really hugely mass produced. So there's all kinds of middle grounds along the way, but I really wanted to show the, the true artisans um, who were, you know, I felt super visionary and how they approach their work, just real purists and, and show what could be done. And have you tried the natural wine yet? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to find it. I, you know, I mean, that's the other problem because they are not able to produce as much as the, yeah. the big, you know, winemakers, um, uh, conglomerates and whatnot. Um, so it's more difficult to find it, you know, and every once in a while I will see, oh, organic wine. Great. Yeah, right. I'll, right. I'll buy that. Um, it is hard to find. And also, I think. Um, you know, there may be some corporate wine producers that are going to try to make some of their not natural wines appear more natural in the grocery store by calling it, you know, organic or, um, you know, even, even handmade or natural. So it's so hard to even know that you're buying real stuff. And luckily there are some shops um, that you can order from online. You can always order directly. Uh, you can go on the actually the raw wine website and it lists internationally real natural wine producers all over the world. And you can literally go on their sites and either to, uh, order directly or find out where their wines are carried. But it, there is this confusion and I found it even confusing when I was making the film, you know, about what really is, is the real natural wine. But, but I do think any, any steps the industry takes toward um, farming without chemicals and, you know, using natural yeast for fermentation and then not manipulating the taste through additives um, or mass producing wine, any steps they take will be better for the environment and possibly more healthful as a consumer. Right, right. Raw wine, is that what it is? Raw, yeah. Rawwine.com kind of I thing? I think so. Um, I just, I'm familiar with the site. I, it's, it's just uh, Google raw wine. You can okay, 
Because, you know, would, after definitely seeing this movie, I want to support these winemakers and what they're doing and the yeah, struggles and, and everything they've also, gone through. Go ahead. Most of the winemakers in the film, if not all, you can just order directly on their website as well. Okay. And they'll show right. you. You'll, you know what, when, when uh, later on, yeah. when, we, when we post this on social media, I'm going to ask you to send me that information because we'll put okay, that great, great. on social media too. Just help support them and what they're doing. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's very important. Um, I thought with organic, when you know, with our, with our foods, they have to go through a process and prove that they're organic. That's not true for wine. No, apparently not. Um, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any sort of um, regulations around wine labeling. Um, one of the things I learned making the film is that there there are no ingredients lists on wine, so. Um, when you buy a bottle of wine, you don't know how it's been farmed and if anything's been added to it. Um, so it's, uh, it's very, it can be, it can be confusing. Um, but um, the winemakers in the film that I followed for the most part go even a step further than organic farming. They do regenerative farming, which is essentially, they don't use any fertilizers, not even organic fertilizers. And they are really um, sort of at the forefront of this movement to create healthy soil. So what I learned making the film is that regular agriculture, which is involves tilling and possibly some type of fertilizer, herbicide, you know, any type of chemical input actually degrades the natural microbiome of the soil. So all those amazing nutrients that used to be in our soil before we started tilling, you know, through this mass, you know, agricultural, industrial agricultural thing that we started as a society after World War II, we've really degraded the health of the soil. And all the farmers, um, winemakers in the film are actually creating super healthy soil biome through their different techniques. And Unfortunately, I didn't cover all of them um, in the film, but uh, one of our winemakers, Megan Bell, is involved in um, a regenerative farm in central California that uh, uses sheep grazing as a, as a method of regenerative farming. And, um, you know, Derek Trowbridge, our regenerative farmer, you know, he's invented this kind of special mulch, which has a special fungus in it that creates a soil biome. So there were so many aspects to this that I just found really interesting. You yeah. Know, that guy's going along. It, it was, and that was very fascinating, you know, that, that he's created this, you know, special mulch that uh, definitely, I mean, it's all of each, every, everyone that you covered in this film, all of their stories were really interesting and, and how they came to it. And each one was different in, in what they were doing and how they were doing it. Now, I live, well, I live in California, so we live in wine country, but I lived in Monterey County for over 16 years. So there's a lot of great wine from Monterey County. Uh, dear friends who had vineyards up in Napa uh, and Sonoma, and now I'm in Santa Barbara, another uh, part of the wine country in, in this uh, state. Well, up, all up and down the coast, pretty much. So uh, again, I want to go look and find the winemakers here. Uh, have there, I just recently there, there are here. quite a few near you, um, as far as I know. I'm, I'm sad I didn't, you know, reach out to any of them, but I know that Santa Barbara and Paso Robles, all the central coast is, is really going that direction. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> Life happens. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's interesting. Now I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna start to seek them out and everything. What? How did you get involved in this? What made you decide uh, to to make this film? Well, um, I guess the the actual event that sparked it. Um, was that uh, my, my brother lives in Northern California and he and his family um, had moved from the city to Santa Rosa and their house burned down in the Tubbs fire. And it was really, really upsetting to everyone, obviously. Uh, they, they were fine. They were actually out of town at a, uh, a relative's wedding that weekend. But that was that fire that just, you know, whipped through the neighborhoods and there was in the middle of the night, there was no 
you know, there warning. was no warning. And so I was already just very, very aware. And I live in Los Angeles. So the climate change is just ever present. It's very upsetting. We, you know, I wanted to try to do something on my end to make some contribution. Um, but so that was sort of what, oh gosh, I apologize. Do, should I just like, turn it off? Oh, it's in the other room. Can I? Oh, okay. I'm, That's all right. No, just stay where you are. Okay. Right I apologize, everybody. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn my phone off. Um, so yes. Yeah, so uh, what happened was they they were unable to build on that site. It was it was too difficult after the house burned down, and they uh, they actually found a home that had a small vineyard on it, and they'd always been interested. My brother and his wife had always been interested in wine and food and the property had olive trees and gardens and they wanted to grow their own food and they wanted to try to make some home home wine. This is apparently very popular in, in uh, Sonoma and Napa. A lot of people yeah. grow grapes and make some yeah. a few bottles of wine every year. And um, he started to, you know, talk to me about what was going on in this particular vineyard. The the family that had owned the house beforehand had a, a vineyard management company taking care of their vines. It's sort of like in LA, you have a gardener who comes and you know, helps you keep your plants healthy. Well, they have a company that comes and helps them and they realized that they were um, spraying Roundup on their grapes every few weeks. And it was getting into their well, their water system. And uh, they knew nothing about wine growing or wine making. But they were just so surprised. Like, why are you spraying Roundup in our basically in our garden, you know, in, in a big, big way like this? And a friend of my brother's is actually Derek Trowbridge's sister, <laughs> and introduced him to Derek. And he went through this process of converting from conventional to organic or really regenerative. And I was just so fascinated by the story. And then then he sent me a case of natural wine and. I had never tried it before and it was it was an interesting experience the first time and you know once you start drinking natural wine it could take a while you know it's hard to go back to the conventional wine but that was sort of the event that sparked it but what made me actually make the film is sort of a combination of what you brought up in the beginning um i thought you know billions of people are drinking wine and probably there's a good chunk of them that don't realize actually that has been sort of corporatized, you know, that their wine has been corporatized um, and that there is this kind of more, you know, local alternative, more natural alternative. So I thought it would just, maybe there'd be a way to get that message out because a lot of people seemed unaware, I was unaware. So that was that. And then I started to meet some of the winemakers and I was really just blown away by just them as people, you know, they're, they're just so true to their vision they don't think about um, what do other people think, you know, um, or, you know, who do I need to please to do this? They're just, they just have such a strong vision about why they want to be doing what they're doing. And you had mentioned, you know, that they're all very different. And that was another thing that I thought was fascinating in terms of making the film is just like natural wine is really not one generic thing. It's, it's sort of like a, large overreaching term that includes so many different artisans and craftspeople and producers, you know, who all have these unbelievably unique stories and point of view within the work that they're doing. And as a filmmaker, I, I just felt so, you know, lucky to have met these people and get them, you know, have the opportunity to get them on on camera. How did you meet each one of them? How did that come about? You, uh, yeah, Pro, Pro you, you yeah so I met Derek through my brother and we started with him and I think when I started filming him and and just kind of observing what he was doing and talking to him and I just found I just thought wow this is just like you know for me who knew um and it was it was really interesting and um I coincidentally had had read um, a New Yorker piece, I think it was a year prior to meeting Derek, um, that featured Gideon Beinstock and um, Donnie Roseman. 
who were in the film. And I realized there's this kind of whole enclave of natural winemakers up in the Sierra foothills doing this super interesting work. Um, and they're, they're really dealing with uh, climate change in a way that is maybe, it's maybe more aggressive up there because it's, it's so close to um, where the Paradise Fire was. There's just the, the, the drought and the heat. The, the heat is just amazing there, but they just keep going because you know the vines survive. They know how to, they know how to grow them, and they make that the, they make these interesting, these beautiful tasting wines based on the soil. So I had read that article, and after I started interviewing Derek, I was I remembered that I had read that article and thought it was so interesting, and I reached out to Gideon, and he said he he would be interested, and so we went up for the first time and and met with he and his wife, Saren, and heard their story. And then I, I felt really strongly about bringing a female voice into the, into the project. I, I really believe that, you know, probably the corporate wine industry is, is mainly male dominated. I know there are a lot of female run wineries and, you know, wine businesses, but it does, you know, sort of like Hollywood and other industries, of course, I think it's harder for women to break in. And I spoke with Derek about it and he introduced me to Megan, who he had, he knew um, professionally, he thought she might be interesting. And um, I was so excited to meet her. She was, you know, very articulate about explaining, um, you know, the corporate wine industry and what it was like to you know, come out of that sort of standard training educationally and work-wise. And, and here she was just this kind of like maverick saying like, that won't work for me and I'm gonna do this instead. And you know, one of my favorite lines in the film is, um, if I was in a nicer industry, I wouldn't have started my own business. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, her, her, her story is very, all of them, I mean, they're all interesting. Every, every, every single person that you have in the film is, is fascinating and their stories are all unique and different and everything. Um, for our audience, can you just explain regenerative? regenerative? Yeah, I mean- Wine making okay. versus- hopefully, hopefully I won't mess it up. Okay. Um, but regenerative farming, as best as I can describe it, is about regenerating soil, essentially healing soil. And um, so any type of farming that involves in any input, like a fertilizer of any kind, even if it's organic or chemical, is, is possibly not regenerating to the soil. Um, essentially, if you can focus on the healthy soil and the soil biome, you're, um, you'll have healthier crops. And so that's called regenerative. Um, but I might have messed it up. We probably should have had like Derek or Tim on the line to really explain it better. But you didn't know I was going to. I got it. I was going to throw that curveball at you. No, it's okay. I should I should know the exact definition for that. But well, as a filmmaker, my take on it is that it, it's regenerative is healing to the soil and to the plants by regenerating the soil. Very good. I think yeah, you hit it. <laughs> Gosh. You, you might need to have another call. And go back there, yeah. You passed the, pass the test anyhow. On yeah. That one. Um, <laughs> what was the most difficult part? I mean, when did you film this and how long did it take you to film it? And then what was the two part question and, and what was the most difficult part of filming it? Mm -hmm. Well, we started filming, I'm going to say late spring 2020. Um, during the pandemic and we kind of filmed on and off for about a year, but um, most of our efforts were focused um, at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, through that, throughout that entire summer, I guess from sort of like May, June through October, we went through an entire, you know, harvest season. And um, so, you know, one of the things was, oh, we were, you know, we were filming during COVID and this was before um, vaccines and treatments were available. So um, most of the filming was outside and, and everyone participating was super, super, you know, nice about it. But, you know, I guess we didn't understand the virus too well at that point. And I was 
really, really worried about, you know, possibly, you know, giving it to one of our film subjects, you know, none of us got it or gave it to anyone, but I wouldn't want anyone to be harmed, you know, during, during the filming process. And, um, you know, it's always, it's always a challenge also, um, you know, to find the narrative structure, the narrative arc, to find that the story with the beginning, middle and end, when you think a subject is interesting, it may not translate into like an actual narrative, driving narrative. And so, you know, we worked really, really hard in post to kind of try to find a way to have three acts that built, you know, built a story along the way. And that's always a, a puzzle, a challenge too. You know, and I guess, I guess thirdly, just having just recently met the subjects and, you know, they were so open to being filmed, you know, you just want to, you just want to do right by them. And, you know, I, I always worry about, about that when I'm doing a documentary versus, you know, like a, a fictional project. Too, so. Right. Yeah. No, you did a good job, a really good job with the film. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's also because so much of this is uh, has to do with climate change. Um, you know, it is also a treaty on that. And, yeah. you know, I've done other films that um, have touched on, you know, climate, um, I've done quite a few on climate change and our water and our drought. And yes. uh, that's why I love what I do because I learn so much, you know, mm -hmm. watching films I may not have ever seen before or became aware of. And uh, so this it's always amazing because a big topic and certainly for us in California I think uh, I think yeah. you know it's even bigger for us in some other parts of the country because we just don't get any rain you know it just doesn't rain here <laughs> when it rains we're like so happy and excited <laughs> and the rest of the country I'm from the east coast originally in the midwest <laughs> and you know and you know rain we got lots of it you know when you hated a rainy day here it's like yes it's a holiday <laughs> so and we have fewer and fewer and fewer of them. Who knows what's going to go on? I mean, so the farming is such a big aspect of climate change. And obviously we are the you know, salad bowl of the country also in this, in this state. Um, and so until we make some changes around that, and also, you know, to cancer. Cancer is just so prolific. I, I just lost two friends in May of cancer, you know, and, you know, one just three weeks, you know, from diagnosis to death. It was that fast. Um, so you, you know, you, you just don't know and, you, and I go, it has to be in our food and our water that we just can't seem to get yeah. on top of that either. I mean, I'm yeah. usually doing cancer research. It's well, gotta be what we're putting in our body. It's you know? so true. One of the things that I was thinking about while you were talking about that, um, and I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no. Oh, thank you. It's terrible. Um, you know, the roundup that, and the other chemical inputs that are used, you know, are, are not necessarily not in the soils for organic or regenerative farmers. It's in the water table, it's, it travels, it, it, you know, it's in our dust, it blows, you know, it's just, it's very hard to get rid of this stuff. And so if you, if there are, you know, agriculture really, if the, if the industry can look at this in a bigger way, you know, and try to break down some of these materials and stop using them all the time, it's going to help everybody, you know, and that's, that's the goal, you know, because, you know, natural wine is, at least the, the wine that I, you know, looked at in the film, it's, it's handmade and it's, you know, nothing is going to be super inexpensive that's handmade like that. And I, you know, and that's another issue. How do you get, how does everyone get access to the healthier choices, you know, um, and I think in the wine industry as well, but it's, these chemicals are everywhere. You know? They are. I did a year ago with a, a documentary exactly about Roundup, actually, you know, oh. and, and organic farmers next to non-organic farmers okay. and how, you know, it would blow into, you know, so because of the wind, so we, you know, we do the best we can. Uh, you know, I've had, a, I've, as I said, I have tried to do organic for as long as I can remember. And a lot of people go, oh, that's so expensive. I said, so it's our yeah. health. You know, I'd rather put my money in my food and what I'm putting in my body than put it yeah. in a pharmaceutical drug later on, you know. 
So, um, so it's, you know, it's, I guess you know, it's not a trade-off as far as I'm concerned. There's only one. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Lori, such a pleasure talking with you. Where can people see living wine? Because it is something that should be seen. And by the way, I don't know. I hope somebody from PBS is listening to this because I think this is a film that should be on PBS. So I just want to say that when I was watching it, I said, this is the perfect film for PBS. So mm-hmm. I'll just put well, that out there to the universe for you. But where can people see it uh, in the meantime? Yeah, so um, we're doing a couple things to start. Um, um, our distributor is Abramarama in New York and they have um, they have great relationships with independent movie theaters so um i'm i'm really happy that we're going to be in independent movie theaters because um you know these are independent winemakers right. and you know it's the sort of anti-corporate wine so we're going to be in a lot of those kind of neighborhood theaters that show documentaries and independent films and you know we're going to be in uh, a bunch of places to start out like like berkeley sebastopol and San Rafael, we're gonna be in New York City um, in on July 22nd. Um, the, the first places I mentioned, July 15th weekend and a whole bunch of other indie theaters. Um, one of them is Sedona, which I think is a great market for the, the film. Um, we're also working with um, Kinema, which does community screenings. So we're hoping to have community screenings with discussions around the film. And so we're going to be doing screenings for several months and right. then ultimately, right. you know, the film will be available. Wonderful. Um, well, it's a pleasure having you on the show. I miss you. wish you much success with Living Wine and people seek it out. Uh, and, you know, it's one that you should be watching. If you like wine, you should watch this movie. Definitely go see this movie. So thank you for being on the show, Lori, and continued great work that you're uh-huh. doing. Well, I so appreciate um, the interview. I really enjoyed it. And thank you. Um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you've missed any of the Jam Fry shows all about movies, you can go to my website, thejamfryshow.com, where all my shows are archived, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, the iHeart Podcast Network, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, you name it, we are there. We're on every single platform there is out there, I believe. Also, you can go to our YouTube channel and while you're there, subscribe and like it and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Jam Price Show. Thank you all for listening.